What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 70 and we started today's episode off with some player training for Loftus-Cheek and Ryan Tyler and as you can see as well after that we can see the transfer window is now open, yes get in the January transfer window has finally come round, the transfer window has reopened once again so really pleased with that, obviously the transfer windows always make career modes a little bit more exciting I think, you always never know whether you're going to make a big signing or not, sometimes you might sell on a star player, you never would have thought about doing so before and bringing in someone new so transfer windows coming around always makes it a little bit more interesting so I'm glad the January transfer window has now reopened although with us here with Watford you see the squad report here to start the episode off as well and also look at the league table and our Champions League round of 16 draw with Watford right now we're top of the table we're into the round of 16 in the Champions League we've still got an FA Cup replay against Morecambe to come as well in the next episode right now with Watford I don't think we need to make a big signing in this January transfer window we still might do we still might do but we've only got around £7 million pounds to work with and the squad right now is fine you can see the squad right now the uh, squad report being shown on the screen right now this squad is fine you know this is a really decent squad I really feel comfortable with the players the new signings have looked really good this season of course Balotelli being the best so far of the bunch the guy we signed on a pre-contract top scorer in the Premier League right now Conor Piak has come in has done really well now up to an 85 overall then you've got the young talent emerging as well like Loftus-Cheek and Ryan Tyler Klein as well I've got to give a shout out to Nathaniel Klein what a right back he's been this season you've heard me on so many occasions singing the guy's praises he's been fantastic so you know this Watford team is totally fine as you can see despite the last game being a loss to second place United we may have lost the Louis Van Gaal side but we're still five points clear of them so right now is it five points clear or four points clear I think it might be five points clear a few points clear regardless at the top of the table and in the Champions League round of 16 as well we've been drawn against the Dutch side Ajax so if we, had we finished that in the second place in that group as well we would have faced Barcelona that's who by Leverkusen had got so I'm pretty pleased we topped that group and instead will face Ajax. They're still a pretty decent side, of course, the Dutch team. And of course, because on Karima, they've got so many young talents as well, they will be a difficult side to face. But either way, uh, I'm glad we draw on Ajax, not Barcelona. And right now, top of the table as well. Still in the FA Cup, we've got our replay to come against Morecambe at Vicarage Road in the next episode. Things right now are going really well, and I don't think we have to make any massive changes. Because in order to make a big signing in this January transfer window, we'd have to sell on a player, which I don't really want to do. So we'll have to wait and see what happens, though. Still, we put a bit for that mid fielder there from the MLS and he's a young talent and you probably know whose regen it is it's Frank Lampard's regen we'll see if we can get hold of the guy we put a low ball off that and we'll wait and see what Montreal Impact says it Montreal Impact I think it was but uh, still wait and see what the clubs say regardless and also as well Obi Olari looks like he's on his way out of the club as well he says he's homesick and he wants to leave the team now the board came to us and gave us an interesting email and said regarding the sale of Olari they were going to act quickly and accept an offer for him now this is really interesting because if you remember my career mode last year if you watched my career mode last year I should say you may have been watching the Sanchez saga and how that unfolded how the ball came to us they said they were going to sell the player accept a bid for him we didn't know what was going to happen and in the end despite him being homesick he ended up going to PSG that was really dramatic and a very interesting transfer saga and the same looks like it's going to happen with Obi Olari as well he says he's homesick yet it looks as though he's going to stay in England and go to the Midlands and go and join Aston Villa so <laughs> I don't know what's going on there but uh, even way we've uh, we've counter offered a bid for Olare and I think he probably will go to Villa Park with the board coming to us and saying we've accepted a bid from another team though I don't know what team that is I don't know what the fee is I don't know what's going on there but we'll have to wait and see what happens I'm pretty sure Obi Olare will be going to one club during this January transfer window I'm just not sure if it will be Aston Villa but anyway we've counter offered, uh, counter -offered a bid we'll wait and see what they say and uh, he may be on his way to Villa Park and that'll be an interesting replacement for Christian Benteke won it one Belgian striker leaving in real life uh, in the start of the season and uh, also a new big Belgian strike coming as well in the game in Obi Olari. So we take on Southampton for the first game of today's episode here away at St Mary's and the first chances of the game would fall to the Saints but Butler made a really good save. Butler of course going to be staying in the Watford team now after saying he wants to stay here at Vicarage Road and continue his place as the Watford number one. We would open the scoring though 23 minutes in. You heard me discuss him a few minutes ago. What a fantastic signing this guy has been. Mario Balotelli, the Premier League's top scorer, Watford's top scorer with another goal to his collection and another assist for Nathaniel Klein, who again, you heard me talking about briefly there a minute ago. Balotelli now has 13 goals in the Premier League this season, 16 in all competitions. What a fantastic debut year he's having. And what a debut year for Klein as well, looking really good so far this season. In the 41st minute, Southampton had a good chance to equalise there, but Marvin Emner struck the shot over the bar and behind for a goal kick. With a half time, as you can see, I felt the game was pretty balanced in the first half. Both sides were playing quite well, but in the second half here, three minutes after the restart, we had a good chance to double our lead as John Joe Shelby gets on the ball, takes around Jose Font and goes for 
goal. The post was shot wide, the post on behind for a goal kick. So the substitute couldn't double our lead and it was still 1 0. But later on in the game, though, in the 31st minute, we have another great chance here. Balotelli flicks it on towards John Joe Shelby, one on one with Gaza Niga. But what a save that is by Gaza. And then Klein's cross does go straight to the Argentines' gloves and it was still 1 0. So he's still led by just a goal to nil in this game. But Southampton, they had a good first half, but in the second half, didn't really do too much. And later on in the game, they were pushing bodies forward, leaving themselves vulnerable at the back. And with seven minutes to go, Inaki Williams gets played through, goes through one on one, puts it past Gazaniga, and makes it Southampton nil, Watford two. So he comes off the bench, makes it two nil to Watford. And the guy's been in pretty good form lately as well. He scored uh, scored two against uh, Burnley. He scores here as well too. He's now got four goals in the Premier League so far. Is it three goals? Three goals, I should say, in the Premier League so far. Four goals in all competitions, and he's been pretty decent of late. And that is another good goal for him there. So Southampton nil, Watford two was the final score. And in the first half, they did play quite well with the Saints, I will be honest. Coman's side did play quite well, but in the second half, they just did not do anywhere near enough. No real clear-cut chances. We played better, in my opinion, despite losing the possession battle and did come away with the three points. So delighted with that. I felt like we had to return to winning ways as well. We were so frustrated after the loss to Manchester United. Only our second defeat of the season so far and our first defeat of the league so far as well. Really wanted to bounce back and get a win in this game after the disappointing draw to Morecambe as well. We did just that. A really solid victory for us and good to see our first clean sheet in a couple of games as well. Still following out a new bid for Sam Williams, the Montreal Impact midfielder. Again, this is the region of Frank Lampard, guys. There's only one English central midfielder in the MLS right now to see a regional new gen, if you will, and it is this guy too. And Lampard did retire last season. So that's Lampard's regen and we'd like to get hold of the guy. As you can see as well, we had three youth players terminate their contracts. Interesting though, one of those guys never told me he wanted to terminate his contract and they all terminated on the same day. So I think these Canadians are just getting sick of uh, Watford now want to go back to their uh, home country. But uh, also as well, take a look at this as well. Thomas Muller set for buy and move. <laughs> I thought this was really interesting. He's going back to the Allianz Arena after going to Germany. You know those scripted transfers in career mode? I think Thomas Muller going to City must be one of the most obvious ones that happens every single year. Same with Alaba going to Juventus and sometimes Boateng to Chelsea. Those scripted transfers, man. I seem to see them happen on, uh, you know, in every single career mode save. And uh, now Muller's actually going back to Bayern Munich after just a couple of seasons at the Etihad Stadium. You also may have seen it with Obi Olare. Aston Villa have indeed matched a £6 million counter offer. So Olare does look as though he's on his way to Villa Park. So he may be homesick, but he's going to give Birmingham a try instead. He looks like he's on his way to Villa, and that's fair enough. I mean, you know, for £6 million, maybe we could have got more for the guy. With the board saying they've already accepted an offer from another team, I don't know if he is going to go to Villa or not. He may end up going somewhere else. But either way, Olare is going to leave the club regardless, and most likely his destination will be Villa Park. So we take on Cardiff for the second and final game of today's episode here as the Welsh side come and take us on at Vicarage Road. It's top versus bottom here at Vicarage Road. So these are the type of games here, first versus 20th, where if you don't win the game, it's just going to be an absolutely huge failure. So coming to this game, thoroughly expecting to get ourselves another win after uh, getting back to winning ways in the last game against Southampton. In the first half, we'd have most of the chances, but Cardiff did hit the bar there with that cross come shot going onto the bar of Jack Butland's goal and eventually behind for a goal kick. But it was still nil-nil at the break. So in the second half here, we had to get ourselves a chance on the board early on and try and put the pressure on Cardiff right from the get-go. And as you can see, just four minutes after the restart, Marco Ryan Taller goes down the left-hand side, cuts past Connolly, who clips in on the back of the right heel. Ryan Taller hits the deck, and it is indeed a definite penalty. So Cardiff are actually defending quite well in this game, but a moment of a, uh, a lapse of concentration there from Connolly gives away a needless penalty. He didn't need to clip Ryan Taller there. He was on his weaker right foot, but either way, he does so, and the referee gives a penalty. Balotelli stands up to take it, and even though the goalkeeper goes the right way, Balotelli is just too good from penalties, man. He is just not going to miss. He smashes the ball right into the top corner, inch perfect, and does open the scoring to make it Watford 1, Cardiff 0. So we take the lead in this game for a penalty. Mario Balotelli now has 14 Premier League goals in 21 and a half games. What a fantastic debut year for Mario Balotelli. He has been absolutely fantastic. And 20 minutes before the end of the game, we double our advantage, and once again is another goal for Inaki Williams. And again, he comes off the bench to score. He did that in the last game. He came off the bench to score against Southampton and he does the same here against Cardiff. Heading in this corner, putting it past the goalkeeper and into the back of the net. That's now four goals in the Premier League and five in all competitions for Inaki Williams as he does make it Watford 2, Cardiff nil. So points surely in the bag now. Cardiff will have the last chance of the game here. This shot going just wide to post and behind for a goal kick but it was how the game would finish. Back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back -back clean sheets, back-to-back -back victories by the same scoreline. 2-0 to Watford and once again another thoroughly deserving victory for us. So really pleased with that win in that game.
game. Cardiff, to be fair, didn't play too badly for his side, currently sitting bottom of the table and coming to the league leaders, but either way, I felt we were the better side, and it was really important in this game and in this episode as well to get back-to-back -back wins after disappointing loss to Manchester United and keep ourselves top of the table and try and extend the gap against Louis van Gaal's side. That is going to end the episode, though, guys, so thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you missed my episode of Road to Division 1 this morning, you may not have been aware that it is my birthday today. I've had loads of tweets, loads of comments, loads of messages from you guys just saying happy birthday, have a great day. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much for all the kind messages. Obviously, I can't reply to them all individually, but I just want to say collectively, you know, you guys are absolutely fantastic subscribers. I really do appreciate every single one of you. It really does mean a lot to me. Even when I'm feeling so lonely, you guys are always there to pick me up and make me feel better about myself. So thank you so much for all the support so far. It's been a fantastic FIFA 16 journey for me right now. Still enjoying this career mode, still enjoying making content for you guys. And again, thank you so much for all the birthday wishes and all the support in general so far. It's been fantastic. But thank you for watching this episode regardless though. If you enjoyed it, then please do leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.